Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with a special editions haul. Someone reached out to me recently and complained that I haven't done any hauls in a very, very long time. And that is true. I have not. I mainly haven't just because I... It went along with the whole I don't... I wanted to get away from doing wrap-ups and hauls and TBRs and just like all these obligatory videos. Um, so... Yeah, I, if I tried to haul every book that I've acquired since the last time I did a haul, which I think has got to be like last summer, so almost a year, yeah, that would take forever. I don't even, I couldn't remember. I'm sure I've gotten books and gotten rid of books in the <laughs> interim. Um, so I'm not going to haul every book that I've gotten. I decided to just do special editions because, um, I don't know, that's cooler. I'll probably have more to say about it and it's more interesting for you to see. Um, so I'm not just going to show you every single book that I've acquired. Um, if that's what you want, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, I buy a lot of books, so I don't always have great reasons for them. So like, honestly, doing book hauls where I was like, and I got this because the cover was pretty and it was $2. Like, I don't know. I, that's boring for me to do. I feel like it's boring for you to watch. And if you love watching that, I'm sorry. It's still boring for me to do it. <laughs> So this is just going to be special editions. Some of these are new books that I only have in special edition form that I have never read before and I just thought it looked cool. Others are favorites of mine that I shelled out to get a fancy edition. So there's a variety and uh, we're going to go through them. I mean, this is a pretty substantial haul, honestly, when I was like, I'll just do special editions. It'll just be like a handful. Um, it's, it's more than a handful. I mean, I guess I could try to hold them all up for you real quick. And by real quick, I mean, it's going to take me forever to stack them up. But when I edit the video... It'll happen in two seconds. So, all right, well, I'll try. This is half of them. So, yeah, we not stacking them all up because you won't even be able to see them on the thumbnail anyway. So, here's some of them. Okay. Oh, my hair is caught in the stack. That's super fun. Yikes. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. I think that's why you guys want to see hauls because you like watching me drop books. That's mean. Oh boy. Special editions are extra slidey, I think. They're very like shiny and slippery. Oh, I had such nice piles. Now they're all ruined. Okay, let's do this. First up, because it's the top of the stack next to me, I have two editions of The Wicked King. Um, I got the Barnes & Noble edition. Uh, well, so I have all three editions of Cruel Prince, regular Barnes & Noble and Alcrate. So I have all three editions of The Wicked King as well. So this is the Barnes & Noble edition. It's exactly like the regular edition, except it's like inverted. So if you've seen the regular one of The Cruel Prince and of The Wicked King, it's like more white. And then the book itself is black. So the Barnes & Noble ones, um, the cover is black and the book is white. So that's the story with that. If you haven't read The Wicked King, I recommend it. It has quite an ending. A friend of mine was spoiled for it before she read it because Twitter is a black hole and it should go away. So she was livid, livid about that and I was livid for her. And then the other one is the Alcrate edition. Since they did a special edition Cruel Prince, everyone was like, well, we need them to match. <laughs> so I got the special edition Alcrate in which came the special edition Wicked King. So that's this. And the uh, naked book is just like the regular, um, the regular hardcover. It's not Alec. So yeah. Um. Next up, uh, let's do all of Schwab all at once. Um. Right, right. These are all special editions of Schwab books. Yeah. Is it excessive? I don't know. I don't think so. So I am missing one because I. Oh Jesus! I ordered it and then my order was canceled by the bookseller because they emailed me and said we've decided to charge you this much for shipping. You have to email us back and approve this or else we're going to cancel your order. And I didn't look at the email because I just thought it was an order confirmation. And I was like, where the F is this book? And then I found that email from like three weeks ago that said, we're going to cancel it in like five days if you don't answer. And I was like, well, it's been five days. Luckily, they still had some. So I reordered it. Oh, I should check. They probably emailed me again about shipping. I'll check after I film this video. Anyway, um, this is the Barnes & Noble edition of The Near Witch. The Forbidden Planet edition that I had to reorder is exactly like this except gray. And the regular edition that you get from like Amazon or wherever is white. They all look exactly the same. 
like the aesthetic. It's just like the background color. And I'm trash. And then the naked book has a witch on it. And I and the the color of the book is different too. The I think it's like black, gray, and burgundy. We'll find out when I get the one that I have the orange one. Um, if you don't know what the near witch is, this is if not the first one of the first things Schwab ever wrote, but um, it was before she was big and it's been out of print for a while. So this is like an epic re-release now that everyone cares who <laughs> about Victoria Schwab. Um, they re-released it in this fancy pants, beautiful edition. So of course I bought every edition that it's possible to own of this book that I have never read because I assume I'm gonna like it. Like. It says, like, for fans of Neil Gaiman. I swear it said that somewhere. Oh, literally on the front right there. For fans of Neil Gaiman. One for Neil Gaiman fans. Sorry. But anyway. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of Neil Gaiman. So. Oh, please don't fall. Okay, so that's that. Then I got both special editions of A Gathering of Shadows, because I have both special editions of A Darker Shade of Magic. So they have to match. This is the collector's edition. And this is, well, this is also the collector's edition, but this is the Barnes and Noble version of the collector's edition. So it's identical, except that it has the different color. And then it has like bonus content inside. I haven't looked at it. I bought it for the cover. Duh. These editions have like art on the inside. Uh, end pages both sides and if you want to see more I'll probably photograph them and put them on my Instagram so follow me on Instagram if you want to see all my books yeah this is the same it's just gold on the outside same 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 z's and pretty sure these are both signed by Schwab pretty sure they are let's not check then I have oh yikes 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 I think I may have hauled oh please don't I think I may have hauled this one last year, but we're going to do them together. This is the collector's edition of Vicious by the E. Schwab, which I didn't like the first time I read it years ago, but I reread it last year and fell in love. So this is that. It has Victor Vale on it. This is a thing with Schwab now. They're putting her characters in the covers. The end pages are pretty snazzy. Then I got the matching edition of Vengeful when it came out, and I still haven't finished reading Vengeful. I'll get to it. Um, it likewise has some pretty cool end pages and it has ooh, Marcella on the cover. I've read some of it. I have like a quarter of it. Um, this is signed by Schwab as well. So these match. And then Aluma Crate did a special box for when Vengeful came out and it came with this fancy red edition of Vengeful, which is super cool. And it looks really cool with this edition of Vicious for sure. But, you know, what's cooler is when you have a matching edition. So they recently, very recently released a matching edition of Vicious so that they match. So that's what these are. And on my bookshelf, I like to, oh, yikes, 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 yikes. I like to stagger them so they look like this. And that's important for you to know, I'm sure. If you get all these editions like I have then you should display them in this way, is my advice. Okay, moving right along. Um, let's do my Golance special editions. Why not? We're doing British books. Golance editions, oh Jesus. Why do you make me do this? Look like this. I have a crap load now, because you know, no one is surprised. I already had the first two books, The Lies of Loch Lamora and Red Seas Under Red Skies. I've had this for a while. They finally released the third book, Republic of Thieves, in this edition. So since the fourth book is not yet published at all, I have a complete set, so to speak. Thorn of Camor is supposed to be... No, Thorn of Emberlane? Whatever the fourth one's gonna be called. Is supposed to be released in 2019. Supposedly. We hope, we dream. But this is the beautiful edition of Republic of Thieves. And then I, I'm pretty sure I did haul or at least show off in a wrap up or something, my Golan's edition of The Blade itself. So I did not bring it over for this haul, but I completed that collection because I got that one off Book Outlet. I mean, who would have thought? They had like one copy and I got it. But I paid full price to complete my collection and got the Golan's editions of Before They Are Hanged and The Last Argument of Kings. Uh, they look great together and they're beautiful and everything, but I have a bone to pick with the publishers because I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the background of both of these books has like a, a faint kind of image of a map 
kind of in the background of it. And they both have that going on, but the blade itself is just plain gray. There's no map motif. So it kind of stands out. Like, just do it or don't do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like it, but, like, if you're not going to be consistent, um, just saying. <laughs> but, yeah, these are beautiful, and y'all know how I feel about the first slash trilogy. It's fab. Um, next up, I have some book outlet special editions of classics, because that's a thing they're doing now. And... If you guys know from previous book hauls back in the day when I used to do them, I always talked about how much I loved floppy paperbacks. And these are classics that they look they they look like they're like leather bound, but it's not. They're cheap. It's like pleather or whatever. And I'm vegan, so that matters. Plus it's cheaper. Who can afford leather? So I got they have you can get like a whole box set that has like 12, I wanna say classics um that are all these editions that are done by book outlet they're not re like everything on book outlet is usually stuff they're reselling it's like a fancy book that they're selling for cheap but these are made by book outlet um or for book outlet by the paper mill press so i don't think you can get them anywhere else and they don't have the telltale black mark on them like most books from book outlet have so i got jane eyre by charlotte bronte um i mean inside it's just a pretty it's a standard book there's nothing inside that's cool but they're just these pretty editions and they're soft like those word cloud classics kind of thing then i got weathering heights by emily bronte again same deal just flippy floppy and i think this one is the prettiest like this is mm, aesthetic <laughs> frankenstein by mary shelley um i just oh my god the other two were like fine <laughs> this one though this one this one <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. I just am in love with it. This is the only one that I've actually photographed for my bookstagram because this one. <laughs> um, if you haven't read Frankenstein, I recommend it. I recommend you buy this edition because it's gorgeous AF. Actually, I have another special edition of Frankenstein that I could have hauled, but uh, apparently I didn't care. <laughs> um, it is like one of those word cloud classics, but this one though. <laughs> so yeah, you should read Frankenstein and then you should read The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein because... Um, that's my life advice for you. Um, the inside is green. I just, ah, uh, I'm a fan. Is that coming across? The, this one, though, have I shown you? This one, though. All right. We are making good time. Next up, I have, what have I already done? Oh, my God. These are all over the place. I don't know what I've shown you. Okay. Um, let's do Lee Bardugo. I have the special edition of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Um, this is, there's no jacket. This is just how the book looks and it's so shiny. And I've definitely shown this before, like in wrap ups and whatever. So you've seen it. I've just never hauled it. So ta-da. And I went to see Lee Bardugo for the King of Scars signing tour. And she signed it which is super cool. And the end pages have a map of the Grishaverse. And it's really fancy. It's got red sprayed pages. Oh yeah, it, I forgot. <laughs> I literally forgot. Oh, I'm so good. At the end, it has art that originally I think was done for Shelf Love Crate for some cards. It has character art of Kaz and Edge, Nina Matthias, and Jesper and Wylan. And I think I want to say, maybe not. I thought there was like Pear Haskell too, but just kidding. It's just the six of them, which makes sense because it's six of crows. I really hope they do another one for Crooked Kingdom because they have to match, right? Then I have like three copies of King of Scars, but the other one is the Barnes and Noble exclusive, but there's nothing different about it except that it's a tiny bit bigger. I shit you not. It's next to my regular one. It's identical in every way, except that next to each other on the shelf, the Barnes and Noble edition is like this much taller and like inside of it, it has like a map you can like pull out and put on your wall, but it's like this much bigger. Like why? Um, if you've seen King of Scars, it's a black cover, the naked cover with like gold on it. And it says King of Scars on the spine. This is the Illumicrate edition and it is gold. And not only is the book gold, but on the side of it, it says, I don't know if you can see, I am the... The monster is me and I am the monster. So it's a pretty fucking sexy book. Not gonna lie. Um, I talked about this in my wrap up. Um, it's good. It's definitely good. It's just not as good as Six of Crows in my opinion. But it's good. And like <laughs> this, this book though. It's 
fucking sexy ass book. This is not signed by Lee Bardugo because my Illumicrate didn't arrive before the signing. So next time, Bardugo. Next time. Next, let's do a bunch of books that I haven't read, but that I have special editions of. Yeah, that's all of these. Good job, me. Okay, first stop is Four Dead Queens by uh, Astrid Schultz? Skolt. Astrid somebody. Um, this is a new release. This is the Alcrate edition because it came in my Alcrate. That's how that works. Um, the normal cover is blue. This one is red as you can see. I kind of had no interest in this book because I'd seen the cover and it looks like every other YA fantasy cover. I was like, it looks exactly like Everless, Ash Princess, whatever the fuck they all, they all look the same to me. So I was just like, whatever. Or like a knockoff Three Dark Crowns. Like, I don't know. I was just like, it's another one. But then my friend uh, posted about it on Instagram and was talking about how, not just how much she liked it, but that based on this cover, you would think this was exactly what I just said. Like another one of those fantasy books that just like every single one is exactly like that. This is actually sci-fi, right? I'm shook. So I haven't read it yet. Maybe it's terrible. But I'm definitely intrigued. And it's signed by the author, which is cool. It has deckled edges, which... I personally love. Some people don't like deckled edges. I do. I haven't actually looked at this naked. I just pulled it out of its shrink wrap literally right before filming this video because I love you. So you're welcome. Um, yeah, so I'll read it and let you know how I feel someday. But yeah, basically, I'm just like, what? This is sci-fi? What? Um, so I'm excited. And I'll let you know. Next up, I have the Waterstones edition of late. Nope. Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. I went to the Cassandra Clare signing. I actually have the Barnes and Noble edition of Queen of Air and Darkness too, which has like the art inside the book jacket. And I could have hauled that, but I forgot that it was special. So I didn't. Just whatever. Look, look it up, you know. Order it from Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This is thick. Um, I have the Waterstones editions of Lady Midnight and uh, Lord of Shadows. I haven't read any of the Dark Artifices yet. I really do want to, but I want to read the Mortal Instruments first, and I am not enjoying the Mortal Instruments. I love the Infernal Devices, and I hear nothing but amazing things about the Dark Artifices. And I know people tell me you can skip the Mortal Instruments, like you don't have to have read the Mortal Instruments to read the Dark Artifices, but I feel like it's kind of like you have to have your greens before you have dessert, even though I don't like dessert, but you know what I mean? Like... You can't just go for the guac, even though that is literally what I do my whole life. I just eat guac. But you know what I mean. I feel like I have to suffer and earn it. Slash, I feel like I want maximum enjoyment. And I think I'll have maximum enjoyment if I get all the weird little references and tie-ins to the Mortal Instruments. So I own every, pretty much every Cassandra Clare book that has ever been published. Because most of them have appeared on Book Outlet at some point or other. Or they are goddamn gorgeous editions like this one that... I don't care if I ever read this. It's just book porn. So, and I have to have matching sets. So I genuinely want to read this. I've genuinely heard good things. I'm excited for it, but I must suffer first. That is what I have decided. So there you go. Next up is The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I've been wanting to read this for forever. And I was telling my friend that when we were in the bookstore. And then I was like, ooh, special edition. So this one is super cool. I don't know how well you can see, but there's like writing all over the jacket. Um, it has black sprayed pages. The inside pages have that same writing thing going on. The naked book does too. It's just a real sexy book. It's totally my aesthetic, AKA a little alarming. <laughs> um, I really, really want to read this. I guess they're making a movie of it. I did not even know that until this sticker which is removable I have not removed it but thank god I hate it when they have like a built-in sticker I'm like why why anyway The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness can't tell you anything about these books because I haven't read them I think that should be clear but to reiterate <laughs> next up I have also at Barnes and Noble when I was with my friend I've been told multiple times now that I should read The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey um, I saw the movie and hated it and was told by those same friends that, yeah, the movie is yikes, <laughs> but the book would be my jam, that it is much darker, much more interesting, 
blah, 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 blah. So Barnes and Noble had for like half off, I think, um, this fifth anniversary signed copy. And I was like, okie dokie. If I'm going to be forced to read something that I wasn't gonna, may as well get the pretty one. And it is signed by the author. So I guess I will read this at some point. And see if my friends were right. I mean, they said it's stabby. Y'all know how I feel about stabby. Last of the books that I have not read, that I have a special edition of, is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Um, I would like to have this edition of Uprooted, but I mean, that's a dream that's never going to come true, because those things sell for like a liver or a kidney. But I started reading Uprooted, I think I'm going to like it. Everything I hear about Spinning Silver, I think I'm going to like it. Worst case scenario, I can resell it. Who <laughs> are we kidding? I don't resell things because I'm a hoarder and I'm lazy. But this is beautiful. And I think I'm gonna like it. And that's all I have to say about that. Oh, it's blue. I, I just got this literally like a day ago. So I have not really looked at it, but it's pretty AF, don't I? It is. Well, if you don't know, I'm pretty sure it's a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin. Just like Uprooted is, is Uprooted a retelling? I don't know. Don't ask me, ask someone who's read it. Okay, I'm down to two books and I was saving the best for last. You're welcome. I feel like it works better if I tell you in the beginning that I'm saving best for last uh, as like a strategy to get you to watch till the end. So telling you at the end, you're already here. So here's your reward for sticking through this nonsense. I have the subterranean press editions of Golden Sun and Morning Star. And I don't have the subterranean press edition of Red Rising yet. I missed it when it was first put on sale. And right now on eBay, you can only get it paired with Golden Sun. And I'm like, I already have Golden Sun. I just want Red Rising. Someday, someday, I will complete my collection because while I mentioned in my previous video or in one of my videos, some point I told you guys that Red Rising of the trilogy is my least favorite. When it comes to the subterranean press editions, Red Rising is my favorite cover. I mean, these are gorgeous AF super fucking gorgeous. They are. But the Red Rising cover is my favorite. So if you just have one lying around, you know, send it on over. I promise this is a good home for it. I will look after it. That does it for my haul of special editions. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you likewise would like me to do hauls regularly. I just feel like they're boring. <laughs> But if you want me to do them, I'll try to be better about that and actually haul the books I buy because just because I haven't been hauling books does not mean that I've suddenly gotten really good about not buying them as this haul should make apparent because this is just a selection. I buy books like it's my job. So if you want me to do hauls like I used to, let me know. I will do them for you. Let me know anything and everything in the comments down below. I post videos on Saturdays, so like and subscribe, and I'll see you next Saturday.